This bizarre little creature is a fully aquatic salamander known as a mud puppy. Or, if you live in the southern parts of the United States, it's also sometimes called a water dog. The mud puppy resembles another fully aquatic salamander known as the axolotl. However, unlike the axolotl, the mud puppy is rarely ever seen in the aquarium hobby. Now watch closely because this mud puppy is about to eat a frozen bloodworm, and it happens so quickly that if you blink, you'll miss it. Both the axolotl and the mud puppy are nocturnal, so they tend to avoid bright light, and the only time I see my mud puppies is when I put food in the tank. Mud puppies are carnivores, and in the wild they have a diet that consists of small crayfish, insect larvae, fish eggs, leeches, worms, snails, and the occasional fish. Mud puppies grow to a larger size than the axolotl, with the maximum size for a mud puppy of around 17 inches, or just over 43 centimeters, and the mud puppy can live for 20 years or more. Both the axolotl and the mud puppy prefer cool water, and they do best when kept at temperatures below 70 degrees. And in my opinion, this need for cool water is one of the more challenging aspects of keeping them in captivity. Mud puppies that live in water that is warm or stagnant will have larger external gills to compensate for the lack of dissolved oxygen in the water. The green areas on this map show where mud puppies occur in the U.S., but it's important to note that they've also been introduced into areas outside of their natural range. In the wild, mud puppies can be found in a wide variety of habitats, such as small streams, large rivers, ponds, and lakes. They've even been found in the Great Lakes at a depth of nearly 100 feet, where the water is very cold and there's a complete lack of light. Nonetheless, mud puppies are rarely ever seen in the wild because they spend most of their daylight hours avoiding predators by hiding beneath large rocks, under submerged logs, or in dense vegetation. However, once the sun sets, they come out of hiding and slowly crawl along the bottom of their habitat in search of whatever food they can find. Mud puppies don't hibernate in the winter. In fact, they're more active during the winter, which is very unusual for a cold-blooded animal like an amphibian. And unless you go looking for them by picking up large flat rocks in a river, you're more likely to see one if you catch it while ice fishing. The mud puppy that you see here is a juvenile, and it's only about 4 inches in length, or just over 10 centimeters, and it won't reach sexual maturity until it's about 6 inches long. Mud puppies mate in the fall, and the females lay their eggs the following spring, beneath a large submerged object such as a rock or a log. The female then guards the eggs until they hatch in the early summer. Which brings me to an important point. Most amphibians, such as frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders, have an aquatic larval stage, where after they hatch from the egg, they live in the water for a while, before they go through a metamorphosis that prepares them to leave the water and then live the rest of their life on land. However, both the mud puppy and the axolotl are what are known as neotenic salamanders, which means that they never change into their adult forms and spend their entire life in the aquatic larval stage. Neotenic salamanders retain their external gills, they never develop eyelids like terrestrial salamanders, and they keep their flat paddle-like tails to help them with swimming. Mud puppies also have what's known as a lateral line that runs down the length of their body. The lateral line consists of a series of pores that can sense movement in the water. These pores help the mud puppy avoid predators and locate food in the dark. Both the mud puppy and the axolotl have an excellent sense of smell that they use to find food as well as mates during the breeding season. 
However, other than when they're searching for a mate, mud puppies are solitary creatures and they tend to be quite territorial. There are two young mud puppies in this tank and they really don't like each other. They're both about the same size, so there's no danger of one eating the other. But a big mud puppy will not hesitate to eat a smaller mud puppy if it can fit in its mouth. And speaking of companions for your mud puppies, I don't recommend keeping them with fish because one of two things will probably happen. Either the mud puppy will eat your fish, or the fish will nip at the mud puppy's external gills and damage them. I also don't recommend keeping axolotls with fish, or keeping mud puppies and axolotls together in the same tank. And since the mud puppy gets quite large, I wouldn't keep a full-grown adult in anything smaller than a 40-gallon breeder. I don't use a substrate in my tank because these are large animals and they have large droppings, so a tank without a substrate makes it much easier to clean up after them. However, if you do decide to use a substrate, I recommend sand rather than gravel because both axolotls and mud puppies can accidentally swallow gravel which can cause a blockage in their digestive tract. As far as feeding them goes, mine are still small, so I rely on frozen bloodworms and small bits of chicken liver. I'm also trying to train them to eat carnivore pellets, but they don't like them very much. So, when the warm weather returns this spring, I'll be giving them earthworms from my garden. And I must admit that mud puppies are not the most exciting animals to keep as pets. However, I do love to watch them eat. And as they get bigger, I look forward to seeing them go after other prey items such as live crayfish and large earthworms. Because I have no idea how a mud puppy is going to sneak up on a crayfish and swallow it whole like it does with these frozen bloodworms. Which brings me to an interesting fact that many people may not be aware of. Did you know that there are fully aquatic salamanders in China that can reach a length of nearly 6 feet or 1.8 meters, and a salamander that size could probably eat a small child? Unfortunately, the giant salamanders of China are critically endangered due to habitat loss, overexploitation, and pollution. And they're not alone. Amphibians in general are seeing steep declines in their numbers for the very same reasons. Luckily for us, the mud puppy populations are still healthy in most parts of North America, but it would still benefit all of us to be a lot more careful about how we treat our local waterways and the wonderful animals that rely on them to survive. And that concludes this brief look at the mud puppy. I hope you were able to see some things that you've never seen before and even learn a few things that you didn't know. Thanks for watching and have a beautiful day.